Good morning. Y'all got quiet very fast this morning. Welcome to St. John United Methodist Church on this rainy Sunday morning, the third Sunday of Lent. We are so happy that you are here with us. My name is Beth Dixon, and I'm one of the staff members here. We would like to welcome all of our visitors, both in the sanctuary and online. We are glad you're with us today. If you are worshiping with us online, we'd love you to leave a comment so we know that you've been watching with us. And if you are a visitor here and would like to fill out a visitor card, we'd love to know that you are here and gives you a chance to tell us a little bit about you and you to ask questions of us. Since it is Lent, this means that Easter is coming and we have Easter lily order forms available. So if you have not filled that out, please do so. They are due by March 20th. There are some physical copies in the front and the back and they are also online. You can find those in the online announcements. Similarly, if you have not signed up for Wednesday night supper this week, please do so before tomorrow at noon so we can let the caterer know. Supper is at 6.15 and you are always welcome to and invited to join us. We have a couple of upcoming meetings this week I wanted to highlight. On Tuesday, the missions committee will be going to tour the hub at 1.30 and you are invited to join them. If you would like some information, uh, see one of the members of the missions committee. I know Jane and Denise and Jenny are all here sitting together. They would be glad to share more information with you, but you are invited to that. And youth and parents, and uh, children parents, parents of children and youth, excuse me, we are having a meeting on Wednesday at 5.30, so please join us for that if you're able. Next Saturday is our next food distribution with DCCM in the parking lot. If you're interested and available to help volunteer to, with the mobile food pantry, please be here about 8.30 to help get set up for that. And the distribution will begin at 9 as usual. Today is a very special Sunday as we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of our beautiful organ with a concert with a cause this afternoon. We have uh, Bradley Welch and Ken Cowan here to play the organ for us. We are delighted that they are here in worship with us. So you will see both of them playing the organ. We are very delighted that we have lots of special guests, including Lynn Dobson, the founder of the Dobson Organ. We have a Dobson Organ. Dobson Organ Company is here for the concert, as well as John Panning and John Ornsma, who helped build the organ. Uh, so it is wonderful to have them and many other friends uh, who are involved in the inception and the building of this organ here with us in worship today and also here for the concert. You don't want to miss it. So I know it is rainy, I know it's a little chilly, and we've had a lot of warmer spring weather, but I really encourage you to come back this afternoon at 3 o'clock for the concert. There will be a reception afterwards um, in the fellowship hall, so we would love for you to join us for this very special event. Thank you for being here with us in worship, and we will now continue with worship of Almighty God.
come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with the songs of praise. Let us pray. Enduring presence, goal, and guide, you go before and await our coming. Only our thirst compels us beyond complaint to conversation, beyond rejection to relationship. Pour your love into our hearts that refreshed and renewed, we may invite others to the living water given to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. together as we prepare to hear the scriptures read this morning. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you at the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great ruler above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth and also the heights of the mountains. See the lost Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. 
For the Lord is our God. We are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Hear the voice of the Lord today. Harden not your hearts as in Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I followed that generation and said, They are people who err in heart, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger that they should not enter my rest. children to come forward and join me down front. Come down. Hello, hello. Come on, Elsie. Come on, Elsie. Okay. We just sung a response about listening to God's voice. So this morning, we have scriptures to talk about water, rocks, God, Jesus, the Samaritan woman. They're all our main characters within our story. So I brought my, one of my favorite little pieces of art that I keep in my office as a gift from my mother. And it's a woman in Madison, Georgia, who makes scenes from scripture. And she uses clay, and you know they're very detailed and very small. Gently pass it to one another, and you may look. And this is the woman at the well talking to Jesus, and that is our New Testament lesson today. But as you pass it, there is something in that piece of art that I want you to listen for and see and hear and see if you can tell. Is that really in the story? Because as an artist, she always does one element of surprise. So as you hear the story today, look right here. Is that in the story? It's a little snake. See if you hear that. As the story is going to be read in a unique way this morning with many voices chiming in. So as you listen. Now, see if it's there. I want you to think about this morning. Why would the artist put that at the well? What do you think? Someone heard this story and they decided to make this picture this way within this pieces of clay, and they added an interesting element. Why? Why would they do that? We don't answer it yet. You want to think about it. You want to hear the scripture read. We, as Christians, as followers of Christ, as disciples of people of faith, are called to be curious. So be curious today. Listen to the story. Figure out what this artist might have been thinking. And I like it. Jesus is really going, he's really talking. He's excited, and at the same time, he's taking a rest on the rock. So I want you to think and listen today with new ears as you hear the story of the woman at the well. And remember, it's the longest conversation Jesus has that is written down in all of Scripture. So it might make it one of the most important. Can you repeat after me as we pray today? Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for guiding me and, and leading me to being curious. Amen. You Please stand for a reading from the Gospel of John.
So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to the eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or, Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I had ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
this morning, we began with Moses and the grumbling people in the hot desert region, waiting those years to go in the promised land. We've all been there when the sun has been so hot that you can feel it all the way into your bones when you are thirsty. Everyone must have really been making a fuss that the grumbling people get land named after them. I think about the own, my own working with children and youth and now having children of my own. I have heard that grumble before when it's a hot day and you're hiking or camping, trying to make something wonderful, but the sun just ruins it all. Here it is. Moses has done the amazing thing of helping the people flee Pharaoh. He has parted the sea. They have had manna, and now it's just too hot. So Moses goes to God, tells God, this is enough. The people are going to stone me when God gives him a response. Move the people ahead. There will be water. Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at the well on another hot day. She doesn't have the relationship that Moses has with God. You know, Moses and God can go up together onto a mountain and history is forever changed. The Samaritan woman, in the middle of the hot sun of the day, goes and meets Christ. And the Bible has its longest story. God meets us, Christ meets us, wherever we happen to be in this life. I was leading a group of very grumbly people a few years ago. Oh boy, their church had a name. It too sat on holy dirt. And man, they could wear me out with complaints. One day, as I was leaving, Yet another moment of bewilderness, a good, kind friend came beside me and said, Remember, God meets everyone where they are. All you have to do is meet them where they are. I thought, great. This isn't a rock with water or a miracle. It's all about relationships. And that's exactly what the woman at the well has with Jesus. It's exactly what Moses has with God. A relationship where God shows up on the hottest, most grumbly day, and they have a conversation that leads to new life, to a turn of the page, to the remembering that they, too, are a part of God's big story of salvation. You will find yourself in hot and dry land. You will find yourself in days where you're not sure what is going on with God or where you are within this world, where, as the woman at the well, nothing in life has gone as expected or planned. Those are the moments where you can trust that God does show up. Nicodemus was last Sunday. He gets his name in the scripture. He has a title. He goes to God through Christ at night. He hears Jesus' message of new life and he scurries away in the darkness to figure that out. 
But the Gospel of John just doesn't lead us with someone scurrying away in the darkness to figure out what is going on with the living water that Christ is talking about. How can there be new life? But the Gospel of John points us this way, to the middle of the day, to someone who is not a scholar, but someone curious, curious enough to have a theological conversation, to talk back, to argue a little. And they leave in the middle of the day to tell others what they and who they and where they have found the living water of Christ. On those hot, dry days, remember that God is with you. On the days when you are not sure what is going on within this creation, remember God is with you. When you are curious and you want to understand more about why are things the way they are in my life, Remember, God is with you. And the best part of the Gospel of John is it doesn't take perfection to have this conversation with Christ. It takes a willingness to argue, to talk back, to push farther, and to not be perfect. Live into that. This Lenten season... We have talked some through confession and prayer with God. That is where our curiosity can begin. For the Holy Spirit can move us in prayer to say, why is it that on this day, when I am hot and when I am thirsty, when I am busy, when I am working hard, that I feel your love the most? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open in your bulletin to our prayer and for this morning. God of living waters, we confess that we have often turned from you and wandered in our own wilderness of fear and doubt. Our thirst mourns daily, seeking to be quenched by your redeeming Yet, when that love is offered to us, we again turn away, unable to truly believe that you would actually heal and love us. Behave. We have chosen to ignore those in need or to deal only passively with them. Our hearts are not placed in service to others, but whether in self-serving motives. Heal us, merciful God, Hear these words of assurance. The water of mercy and healing power over you. God is loving and faithful to those who come to God. Come seek the loving presence and be healed. Amen.
be seated. We'll have a few moments of silent prayer and then I will lead us in prayer together. Let us pray. Loving God, on this day, we are thankful for the rain. We are thankful for our time together here in this sanctuary. We are thankful of you, how you remind us of your love. On this day, nudge us forward as your people not people who grumble, but people who see and respond to your goodness. Lord, there are moments in life when we are overwhelmed. There are moments of life when we have fear. And there are moments when we realize that how we imagined life to go did not quite turn out. Meet us in those moments. Remind us of your love and that you bring new life. Lord, today we trust that you know and hear all our prayers. That you open the doors in which we need to travel. That you place our feet on what the path that you set before us. Lord, today we celebrate the gifts of this place. Help us to continue to be good stewards of our gifts. And help us to celebrate as your people. And let our celebrations remind us of your unending love. And as your children, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite for you to stand and offer each other signs of peace. Peace. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom.
we close worship today, please join us back here at 3 o'clock as we celebrate the birthday of this organ and our concert series. And so I invite for you today over lunch to share the story of your favorite birthday party that you had. Maybe it was your 20th birthday. I invite you to talk with each other about your best celebration in this life. As we close, let us sing together Hope of the World. the grace, peace, and love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>